the board of which you were chairman was the only one, the only group that could block your trades? Uh, they certainly uh, could have blocked them uh, up to the limits unless we got uh, authority to go beyond those limits, which we did. But they were the only ones that could block it, yes or no? There was nobody else in the company that could block those trades. The, the board could block them. The board could block them, yes, sir. Well, that was Congressman James Renacci grilling John Corzine back in December over what he saw as a lack of internal controls at MF Global that led to its bankruptcy. The congressman will be back again asking questions of the MF Global executives today, this afternoon, uh, at the hearing. And he joins us now uh, from Capitol Hill. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Betty. How good, are you? Good morning. I'm. I'm Doing well this morning. Look, it's been about three months, right, or so since we had that, since you had that hearing uh, with John Corzine. And with all this information you, that's now been uncovered and, and discovered about the days before the bankruptcy, uh, do you feel you, in, in fact, that you, that you didn't get to grill Corzine enough? Should you have come down harder on him given these new questions? Well, of course, in any hearing, it'd be great to have uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes uh, to ask some questions because you just start to get involved in, in getting answers. So uh, it's always good to get as many questions as you can. Of course, we have a lot of uh, other congressmen and women who wanted to ask questions, too. So sure. we continue to try and uh, dig into that information. So what are your biggest questions today? Well, today's hearing really is about causes and consequences. It's about what caused the problems? What were the consequences? How can we stop in the future when there's $1.6 billion lost um, of constituents' money and Americans' money? We need to be able to find out what happened. You know, there were regulators there. What happened? What were the causes? And how can we make sure this doesn't happen in the future? Uh, well, certainly those are the objectives, but do you think that you will get those answers from the people that will be on the panel today? Uh, everybody from uh, possibly Edith O'Brien, who may answer or, or may or may not answer questions, to Lori Ferber, to Sorinsky. Uh, do you believe you'll get any of those answers from them? Well, we hope so. You know, today's uh, panel includes a lot of the executives that were there, uh, some of them that were actually making the transfers, and, and uh, we're hoping they will answer some of those questions so that we can see what caused this. And, uh, you know, also, as, as I said, we had um, examiners there. We had people there from uh, the regulators there. So it'd be interesting to see how they interacted and, and uh, who made these decisions and why these decisions were made. Do you feel, after having seen more of these emails, uh, is your sense, Congressman, that there was, in fact, some intent or, or, or some confusion or something that had happened in the, in, the, in the last few days or some intent by MF Global uh, to cover up perhaps the mixture of, uh, of the firm's money and the client money and, and therefore uh, knowingly having transferred that money to, to their own accounts? I mean, do you believe more so that that has happened? Well, again, with $1.6 missing, um, clearly there was money being transferred and somebody was making the authorization to do that. Those are the kind of things we're hoping to be able to get some answers on today. Uh, whenever you're using customers' money like that, there has to be reasons. Somebody must have known. There's reconciliations. I know there's processes. Um, we need to look into the details and see what happened. And again, we have to make sure this doesn't happen again. Do you believe more strongly that perhaps Corzine may have known? Well, clearly, uh, Mr. Corzine was involved in, in a, a lot of the day-to-day -day operation. You know, we see the emails back and forth. Um, at this point in time, it, it looks like he had, you know, that he was at least part of uh, discussions, and we got to continue to drill down and find out how much he was really authorizing some of these transactions. Would you consider bringing him back to the Hill to testify again? I think we have to continue to uh, consider bringing anybody back uh, as long as we don't have all the answers. So yes, absolutely. There's always that opportunity to continue to, to investigate the people that we're talking to. And as more information comes out, uh, there might be a possibility of bringing people back, yes. Okay, all right, Congressman, thank you. I really appreciate it. Congressman Jim Renacci, uh, who will be on that panel 